is on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm gonna be removing the old leaky plastic cruddy radiator inside of my bmw e92 and upgrading it for this brand new fully aluminum one here in my hand and this should provide better longevity better performance and lower temperatures overall i should never need to replace this again because no plastic, it's not gonna leak. Let's go ahead and start with this upgrade. But now I'm gonna explain why you actually need one of these radiators that's fully aluminum. And that's basically gonna be because it's fully metal. We don't have plastic here on the side. This is the most common place that a radiator is actually gonna leak from. On the OEM radiator, this is all plastic. So plastic doesn't bond with metal too well. Here you can see we have a nice clean weld, but on the OEM radiator, only thing holding these two together is really an adhesive and some plastic clips. So overall from the factory, it's just a flawed design. But yeah guys, metal on metal, this will hold up for years and years to come. Unlike the OEM one, that's just plastic on metal and that just doesn't create like a good seal and it causes premature wear. So yeah, let's go ahead and install this guys. First thing we wanna go ahead and do is drain the coolant out of the car. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the coolant reservoir cap while the car is cool, of course. Now put this off to the side. Now we're gonna go ahead and jack the car up so we can go ahead and get to the drain port underneath there. And so coming under the car, guys, this is the drain bolt. You're literally just gonna twist it around this way. It's kind of funny, but I found a quarter fits really good in here. And as you guys can see, I tried to JB weld where the plastic meets the metal, but it is leaking again. So yeah, we're just gonna replace this. So now we're gonna let that fully drain out right there until it completely is empty. Make sure you use a kind of deep pan like this to avoid any splash from coming over the top. Cool, so now while that's draining, go ahead and remove this snorkel. Usually it'll be held on by some T15 or T20 screws, but I zip tie this snorkel on, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties off. Cool, so from here, I basically have a whole bunch of cables and stuff routed, so we're gonna go ahead and just move this out of the way so I can free up my fan here. So we'll actually go ahead and just unplug my fan and you're simply gonna pinch, pull that out just like that. And now we will need to remove this coolant hose here. So we're gonna have to free up our air box. And for this, we'll just need a 10 millimeter ratchet. Now we'll go ahead and unplug our mass airflow sensor. Should just be able to pull it off just like that or use a flathead to back it off. And now we'll take off this band clamp so we can free up the air hose. Let's go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver and remove that. And once you back off this band clamp with a flathead screwdriver, your whole air box should just come straight out. So go ahead and put that off to the side. Oh man, I love the way this Mishimoto air duct hose looks, especially matches this oil filter cap. Link for that down below. And we need to remove this fan shroud, but as you guys can see, this whole mess over here is clogging everything up because we have this coolant hose here blocking the fan shroud. So we have to go ahead and actually remove this. So super simple, we're just gonna get our flathead screwdriver in there. So now our band clamp is loosened. We can actually go ahead and back this hose off of the main one. Cool. Now you really wanna go all along the top of the fan shroud and just kinda unhook everything that's hooked into the fan shroud, like all these cables. Now, before we pull out the fan shroud, we have to go underneath the car one more time. And what we actually have to do is unhook our transmission cooler from the fan shroud assembly. Super simple, all you'll need is a T20 screwdriver and you'll literally just loosen off this screw just like this. Grab the screw so it doesn't fall. Cool, got it in hand. And now our transmission cooler is fully unhooked. And now the last thing we'll need to do is basically free up these little clips right here which again is super simple. It really should just push out of place. Now we should be able to grab the fan shroud and actually pull it all the way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage the camera so I can show you all the best way to do that. So you're just gonna grab it, free up all the hoses, anything that could be in the way. It came straight out. You just grab it and pull it up. Now that our fan clutch is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose. Just go ahead and pull off this clip, pull it up. Then right here, we're gonna pop this clip off to the side. And then once you do that, it's gonna free up the upper radiator hose. So just go ahead and pull this down, just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the top one, the behemoth, pull it off just like that. We're gonna be replacing this either way. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull off the entire hose. Bam. And then down there, guys, we're gonna remove those two coolant hoses that are holding themselves to the radiator. After we get that clip popped up, we'll go ahead and grab the hose and pull it off. And you're literally just gonna grab this thing and pull it clean off just like this. Whew, get it out of the way. Put a drip pan under there as well. And something I wanna show you guys is this one here, the clip is at a terrible angle. It's best if you use a little hook tool. And now we should be able to just pull 
this thing right off. Be aware, once you remove this, more coolant is gonna come out. We should be fully freed up. Now holding our radiator in, we're gonna have these two T20 screws that we're gonna go ahead and remove. Right, guys, usually you would unhook that hose from the bottom, but we're gonna actually gonna be replacing this hose because it's one of the only hoses I haven't replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull this hose right here off and then just remove it all with the radiator. And it really helps if you get a flathead in there and get this thing off because this thing will be extremely corroded. Sweet guys, so now that hose is off from our transmission cooler. So we'll pull this all off as one unit. You should be able to just remove and wiggle out the radiator just like this. You'll have to play with it a little bit, but I'll go ahead and stage the camera up and show you guys how to remove it. Just like that. And now this is exactly what I was talking about on this POS, this absolute POS, is that it's plastic, guys. You can see how JB welded tried to get over a leak that occurred, but plastic does not hold to metal well. And you can see BMW uses these little clips and the adhesive that they use does not do a good job, guys. No matter what you do, it leaks. I replaced this O-ring, which is a very, very, very common leak point. It's just a POS plastic and metal do not go well together. So that's why we're upgrading to this metal on metal and we should not have any issues after this whatsoever, guys. And we can see overall the construction is just so much better. We have these dime welds as opposed to this plastic right here. This is going to leak no matter what you do, even if you replace it. This radiator here is four months old. That is no exaggeration, four months and it has kicked it. So yeah, we're gonna go with this all aluminum one and curb that issue all together. So let's go ahead and throw that in. And this radiator works for both automatics and manuals. We can see this little cover here is actually gonna block off where the transmission cooler hose attaches to. But if you do have an automatic, you can plug that hose in right here, but a manual, we'll go ahead and plug it off. But since we have an automatic, let's go ahead and attach our brand new hose. This thing is actually super lightweight, which is kind of surprising. We can see that it comes with a new drain plug right here that you can just simply get a flat head in there and remove it so that's easier and it is marked here i'm assuming the proper torque the mouths and everything like that look to be in good shape no dents dings or anything like that you can see we have all the appropriate inlets and outlets and etc so let's go ahead and remove this little cover here so now we can go ahead and attach all of our hoses and everything and inside the box as you guys can see came with some nice stickers that's always a pro comes with a little instruction manual so as you can see if you have an automatic transmission you're going to use a small drain plug remove the metal cap and etc that was right here which we went ahead and did and then we're going to remove the sleeve over there now while this thing's off the vehicle we're basically going to go ahead and put on our little hose because it'll just be a lot easier now we should be able to use the new supplied hardware so we'll go ahead and just put this hose into position just like that line everything up and now we'll use our new hardware our new screw right here and it should be able to get this thing fully into position. We're gonna have our 10 millimeter socket. And now we don't wanna go crazy on the torque here. Just snug it into position. I went ahead and sat the new CSF radiator in. And what I will say is this thing fits extremely nicely. It fits almost, I'd say better than the one I had in before. And the one I had in before was an OE. So I have everything tightened down. Look at all the nice metal fittings. Everything looks good. And reinstalling the hoses was not an issue. Everything fit tightly how it's supposed to. Sweet, so from here guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my new upper radiator hose. Cause like I said, these O-rings, once you remove it, it never seals the way it did before. And make sure everything's all nice and flush here. Grab it, really lock it into place, clamp everything down. Same thing here. And give it some test pulls, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Same thing here. And then grab your bottom hose here and go ahead and clamp that into position as well. Cool, so now we're gonna go ahead and get everything here out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our fan and drop it back into position. And now we can go ahead and fit in our new little 10 millimeter screws that came with this radiator. And then we tighten that on. And that's so much more convenient now, having 10 millimeter bolts holding everything into place rather than the little screws that come with like those. And another cool feature about this all metal radiator, you can see we have these brackets welded into place to fit the fan shroud in. And that's so convenient. You don't need any plastic whatsoever. You don't have to risk anything breaking over time. No more need for stuff like this. And now something you guys wanna make sure is that the transmission cooler here, you want it to bolt to the surface of the fan shroud itself. So we're gonna bolt this in 
to the fan shroud assembly itself. Sweet, and now the last thing we wanna go ahead and do is put everything right back together the same exact way. So you're simply gonna pop the air box back in, the snorkels, everything like that. And you can go ahead and fill up the cooling system with the approved BMW Blue Coolant and link down below for the entire coolant bleeding procedure on the E90, E92. So let's go ahead and take the car out on a drive because I wanna go ahead and see how much cooler the car runs with this new upgraded fully aluminum radiator. So let's go ahead and hop in. And I definitely notice a difference when it comes to the coolant temperatures. I mean, you can see my coolant temp sitting at about 199, same for the oil temp. Before my coolant temps definitely sat above 200. I would probably say somewhere in the 210, 213 mark and oil temperatures have significantly gone down 197 is great usually sat at about 210 somewhere around there you can see it is even running a tiny bit cooler here i would definitely say that that upgraded all metal radiator definitely enhances your car's cooling abilities so yeah guys we just got back from about a little 30 minute drive so we're gonna check on our temperatures da, 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 da. We can confirm after about a 30 minute drive, we're at 199 for the coolant temp, 195 for the oil temp. So that is pretty insane to get that good of a cooling upgrade straight out of the box. So I definitely highly recommend.